Hi everyone, so in today's video we'll be going over this script that allows you to create a series of floors with columns here. Uh, now it's fully parametric, we'll have the slab thickness that we can increase. We also have the overhang for the building. So if you're trying to create a facade on the outside, um, here we have the column height, so super drastic or not, uh, depending on whatever parameters you're looking for. And then overall, um, size of your columns so all of these uh, parameters are available for you to kind of play with and also uh, what I like is having the ability to basically pick how many floors um, and so I'll go over all of these steps here I'll also be sharing the script so make sure you check the description for that um, and ask any questions if you have any um, so let's jump right in okay so to start I'm going to actually create a plane and I'll actually bring in a surface or actually I'll double click here and, and bring in a plane and what plane surface is is it just brings you a plane and allows you to pick the, the X and Y now last time I actually created a rectangle then a boundary surface which is the same thing but this one actually takes away an entire component so it's just a little bit simpler so here let's go to 240 and I'll plug in the same for the X and the Y now we can subdivide this in many different ways. Um, the simplest one, just to kind of do a quick subdivision uh, with points, you don't necessarily need to use a grid. Um, you can use surface frames. So let me actually double click here and type in frames. And then you'll get this component called surface frames. Now, when you plug that in right away, you'll get all of these little construction planes throughout here that's going to be your UMV count uh, and subdivision. So I'll actually go here and decrease that number to like five. And there we go. We have U and the V count. We have a bunch of frames, which actually are not just frames. They're actually also points. So if I go to a point component and plug in the frame into the points, we see that we extract uh, the points. And those are going to be important because those become the center point for where your grid's going to go. So I'll actually take this one, disable the preview. And now that we have these, we can go ahead and start creating our columns. So depending on what type of columns you're trying to create, whether they're round or square, um, you'll use these points as the, the point where those are gonna be created. So I'll start here with a circle. And we'll plug in the points into the plane here. And then the radius, that's where we can pick the radius of the column. So I'll plug that into here. And let me go ahead and type in units to see what units we're working with here. And we're working inches and then feet and inches here. And so for a 20 foot, which is 240, um, that is too many subdivisions so let's just go ahead and decrease this to like three or even two where we can have this would be a 24 inch column so let's actually decrease that to like a 12 inch diameter column um, and now this will give us a little bit better space for uh, what we're working with here so now that we have these let's actually uh, go ahead and just take those and create boundary surfaces which will give us planes exactly sitting right there. So we'll disable the preview on those. And now let's go ahead and extrude these columns up. So let's take those surfaces. Let's go ahead and type in extrude. And we'll plug in into the base those surfaces. And the direction, direction that we're going to extrude is going to be in the Z direction because we're trying to go vertically. And now we're going to take a new component. So I'll go 120 to make it 10 feet tall. And uh, that's good, but actually I want to increase the size here just to. Just to have a little bit more space and make it look a little bit nicer. So perfect. Now we have our base uh, columns that we can always increase or decrease the count depending on what we're looking for and uh, we are now going to create the roof portion of it so what we're going to do is take this plane and just move it 
So we'll plug in the plane into the geometry for move. And the good thing is that since we already have the 120 as a Z vector, we're going to use that same vector as our motion, bringing it up the same amount. So this ties both of those, the, the height of it ties to both the floor slab that's moved up and the height of the columns. So now we can take this and notice that it's sitting right here. So we actually want to offset it out the same as the radius of the pipe or up the circle. So I'll take this and let's go ahead and double click and bring in an offset curve. And what this will do is take the outer boundary of the surface and offset it out a default of one. So we don't want that default of one. We actually want the same amount as the radius. So we'll go here and take the six, plug that into the distance here. And there we have our new plane that we can use for our floor. Now, if you want an overhang, the, the trick that I, that I suggest using is instead of offsetting this curve again, just go ahead and do an addition. So go ahead and bring in a plus sign. This gives you an addition, which will allow you to take the six plus, and then we'll say th uh, three for now, or actually let's make this a larger slider. Um, I'll say 48. So four foot overhang. So six plus 48 is 54. And let's say we leave it at zero. So let's leave it at zero for now and I'll show you what it'll do. Here, we'll plug it into the distance. And since we have zero here, it's gonna go six plus zero equals six and it's gonna be the same amount. But now this becomes our overhang amount. So we can say zero overhang or a hundred overhang. So here we can just say 48. And now instead of us needing to um, offset that curve again, we can just do an addition and add, oh shoot, let me fix this here. And just add that overhang or that offset with a mathematical addition. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and do a boundary surface. Disable the preview here on this curve and let's extrude this surface in which direction will we want to go vertically and for this one we do also want to pick the height so let's say we want it 24 inch slab we can take that plug it into here then disable this preview and now we have basically our overall design here that's always going to keep a consistent overhang is going to keep a consistent division in in your columns here we can always increase the number and have the ability to change the height and everything here is kind of tied parametrically right so if i increase the height here the height the roof will go with it and then here at the end we have that slab so that's a little bit thick let's go here to 16. i think that's looking a little bit better and now um you could create a floor slab which it would just be the same thing just taking that bottom sir um this bottom one so let's go ahead and do that. Let's take that bottom one and let's offset the curve by how much? Well, we want the same amount as the one below or the one above. Now we're going to do boundary surfaces. So same thing. And then we'll disable the preview on the original one. And now we're going to extrude this surface down. So I'll bring a negative component. We want to extrude it down and we'll do the same amount as how much we extruded it up, but down. So 16 negative in the Z direction. And then we we'll plug this here and we'll have basically our floor slab and our first column. No, first one second. So We'll have the columns and the second floor. And this is what we can use to copy and create a series of floors using this type of, um, this type of structure. So what we're going to do now is take this and this and just copy them up. So how are we going to do that? We're actually going to move, use the move component 
and we're also going to use the series component. Now these two are going to basically create the copies up, but before that we need to understand the different heights that we've actually achieved. So if we take a look here in elevation, we have the columns, which go up 120, and that's determined by this one. And then here we go up 16, which is determined by this one. So what we actually do need to do is add those two together using math. So let's go to addition, and we're going to add both 120 plus the height that we extrude this, so 16. This will give us the overall height that we've actually moved from here to here, which is now 136. And that becomes your step, right? Because we want to use that amount to copy it up. So I think that'll make sense in a second. So once we take this one and this one, so let's plug in this extrusion into this into the move. Now we're going to plug in those columns into the move and automatically you'll see that both of those moved up and that's because automatically when you bring in the move component it's going to move it up 0, 0, 010 which means it's going to go up 10 units in the z direction so we don't want it to move up that amount in the z direction we want it to move up this amount which is 136 and this gives us the ability to either start at one two or three but we're going to keep it at zero and then count is going to be the number so automatically it's going to be 10. when i plug this into the series let me see here and let me actually flatten this top one so there's a reason as to why let's see here so we'll do actually one at a time we'll actually just do Take away the graft, take away the graft. Oh, the reason why is because we need to plug, <laughs> I keep, I can't believe I forgot that. So we need to go give it a direction. So we'll go in the Z direction. So it's gonna go 136 in the Z direction for the floor slabs. And then we're actually gonna plug this in now and it'll work for also the columns, but we need to flatten here or Let's see if we flatten here. Let's see if we graft. And then I think we need to flatten these to, to get them to work, both of these. Huh, for some reason that's not working. So let's do what I did uh, before, which is just do one at a time. So we'll do this one and we'll just copy this over and we'll do the same thing for this one. So we'll plug that into the top. Uh, and then here, instead of flatten, here it is flattened let's see here so the top one you would do graft on the top for these we don't really need to so let's get flattened flatten and that's how you get it to work so sometimes it gives us some issues in the way that the information is organized but with this series and then this series we have those columns and that's why i said we're gonna have 10 floors um because here in the count we have 10 so if we just said three on the count that'll give us three floors. And the reason why we're seeing overlapping information here is because we're starting at zero. So if we were to start at one, that would go away. And if we did just disable preview on this stuff, which are the columns, the initial columns that we're copying up, then you'll see that all of a sudden um, that issue is gone. We don't have them overlapping anymore. So now we can increase and decrease the number of floors and we still have all of our initial parametric um, abilities which is to increase or decrease the overhang this could be like zero overhang and this is like a hundred inches overhang um, this way we can also increase the floor to floor height and ultimately the column uh, size and everything so we don't have a beam system in here uh, this is more of like a clean uh, slab column. Uh, the columns would act or the structure would actually be inside of the floor here. Um, so this is just a straightforward way of doing that. Um, the next thing that you might want to do is when you create a series of them here, having them rotate slightly as they move up 
that would be like the next level of creating a parametric uh, building. But this gives you an idea of how to, you know, get started with a base structure.